Welcome to this conversation at the True Colors Film Festival, an online film festival which takes place from the 3rd to the 12th of December. The theme of the festival is One World, One Family. In the short film program of this festival, there are five specially selected films produced and created by Our Better World, the digital storytelling platform of the Singapore International Foundation. Today, we're sitting down with Rebecca Lim, head of Our Better World, to chat about these films. It's a great and pleasure to be here, Gerald. Glad <laughs> that you're here. Uh, thank you for talking to us today, Rebecca. Uh, to begin, can uh, we talk about how Our Better World started mm. at the Foundation? Mm. Yeah, this was, I think, uh, just over eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, the Singapore International Foundation had just celebrated 20 years. And SIF is all about connecting international communities for meaningful collaborations for positive impact in communities all across Asia. Great. We looked at our programs in terms of the impact it's delivered through international volunteerism, social entrepreneurship and culture exchange. And then we asked ourselves, digital has already changed so much of the way we live. So how do we leverage digital to bring world communities together to do good, to complement the analog programs that we were running for the last 20 years. And that was when we went to research. Um, we found that there was a lack of positive news in media. There was a whole host of non-profits and social enterprises doing good all across Asia, but there was not an opportunity for them to tell their stories and to tell their stories well. On the other hand, we found that there was this growing passive online audience who says, I want to do good, but I don't really know where to look. That was when we said, let's do this. Why don't we tell inspiring stories, shining the light on nonprofits and social enterprises doing good all across Asia, and put them out on social media, reaching people where they are, and giving them an accessible way to contribute. And that was a hypothesis that we had over eight years ago. And we were so glad that we had the support from the board uh, to pilot it, and it's been eight years. The digital landscape has changed tremendously, but we've been very thankful that we've had the opportunity to work with our network of impact storytellers in the region that comprises filmmakers, uh, writers, photographers, to capture these stories um, and the impact that is delivered in terms of awareness for the causes, more donations, more volunteers has just been so encouraging. And I always say that it's a privilege to do this job. Great. Yeah. So you saying that in the eight years that it, it has started, have you noticed uh, a, a change in the impact and in how much it's, uh, uh, you know, engaged more people in the, in, the, in the aims and goals of what, our better world? Yes, we have definitely seen um, a growing interest mm -hmm. um, in this area and over the years we've also seen a growing clutter <laughs> right? That's, uh, but at the same time we are glad that we started eight years ago which meant that the foundation that we've built over time um, and what was important at the core of what values that we stood for and constantly innovating and looking at new ways of storytelling um, kept us in a good place. <laughs> to then say, how do we make sure that amidst the clutter, we continue to engage audiences, we continue to have built this base of over 700,000 online community mm -hmm. in our key markets of India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Singapore. Simply put, we are solving a problem of apathy. And reaching people where they are in building empathy, but we're not stopping at building empathy. We're bringing them to another level of building compassion because the difference between empathy and compassion is an added desire to help. Mm -hmm. So you don't just understand where someone is coming from, um, but you have a place that you can uh, play a part. And I think um, that's the, the key thing for us. It's, the power of stories compel, um, together with the fact that any action that you as an individual take can actually make a difference and that collectively we can play a part to support these lesser known causes in a variety of ways. 
have there been avenues in which you've been able to uh, measure or assess some of the success of this mm. approach? This is actually very integral in how we uh, start from sourcing a story to producing a story and distributing the story online. Um, the story criteria that we broadly have is how do you, what, is this a compelling story, right? Is this a cause um, of a non-profit or social enterprise that needs the help and is ready to be helped? So it tends to be more the grassroots type of organizations. And thirdly, we asked ourselves, is there an accessible way for an online audience to get involved? And with that assessment, we go through a very rigorous process uh, to then measure, at the end of that, um, as we launch the story, we always measure the before after. <laughs> right, the awareness that's been created, um, is this story's intent to raise more volunteer inquiries, more donations, and so across the stories, it has really been a variety of different impact that is resulted in. And so every year, we do an annual impact report mm -hmm. to highlight to our community that, hey, you know, these are the mix of stories we've done in a year. These are some of the highlights. And you have been part of sharing these stories and taking action on the stories. And our aim is that more people would share the stories and amplify that further mm -hmm. and more people would take action and support yeah. the causes. I'd like to explore this uh, process by which you um, identify uh, organizations and stories mm -hmm. and how do you actually uh, deal with that or treat and, and therefore uh, find a way to treat it, in, mm -hmm. especially in terms of storytelling. Yes, so I would say that this is really anchored in our values mm -hmm. of humility, authenticity and compassion. In terms of authenticity, um, it's really the real and truthful, what you see is what you get, right? Uh, this means that we don't shy away from telling the reality of the challenges and the issues, but we choose to focus on the solution. What is the redemptive part? What is someone doing to solve this issue? And the intent is to make that relatable so that someone who watches it say, oh, I can do something about it. And this aspect of truthfulness means that then we work with storytellers, filmmakers, for example, mm -hmm. who share that same ethos and principles. Right? Mm -hmm. um, because then it, it needs to be that they, they need to share um, the value of compassion, mm -hmm. that the reason of why we are telling the story must be in bringing out the best for the story subject, for that nonprofit and the social enterprise. Mm -hmm. It must be with their interests in mind. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to build that trust with the story subject. And that's why we don't work with any storyteller. Mm -hmm. It will need to be um, someone who believes in that and, and also exemplifies that aspect of compassion. Because in every aspect of the production process, mm -hmm. from the time you first meet the story subject to pre-production, to interviewing, to even the post-production, mm -hmm. right, in understanding the sensitivities in how um, they are to be profiled in a dignified way is very important. And that's why with humility, it's all about us learning together. Not, we're not saying that, oh, because our better world has been around, so you have to just listen to what we say. No, every story we learn from the story subject, every story we learn from the storyteller as well. And how can we bring out the best story? Mm -hmm. And always um, asking for consent Mm -hmm. um, in everyone whom we profile, and some, many actually come from marginalized communities, yeah. which means that they may not be fully aware of the consequences yeah. when it comes to having their story told. This means that we actually need to play that part mm -hmm. and put ourselves in their shoes and, and constantly ask them, are you sure this part is fine? Do you want to reword it in some way? You actually have the space and to do that, you know. So we don't want um, the profile to feel that they need to answer questions in a certain way mm -hmm. to fit what we want the story to be. Yeah. And that's very important as a process that we take. Yeah. Are there any memorable um, examples that you could talk about now, especially this aspect of actually 
in a way, educating even your subject uh, in the film about the possible mm. consequences or the possible, you know, f follow throughs that, are, mm. that might happen to them. Actually, there are many examples. So the, the story that we did um, on Dignity with Flowers, mm. um, it profiles uh, Fu, uh, which is a social enterprise from India. When we told this story, the name of social enterprise was Help Us Green. So they actually work with marginalised um, communities, which are the Dalits, um, especially the women, and they give them jobs. Um, and the jobs actually is a very meaningful one. Uh, where they take uh, recycled temple flowers and make that into incense sticks. Mm. Uh, in this case, we needed to be very sensitive in identifying um, a right profile who understood what it meant when her face was going to be on video, it will be spread online, um, and the sensitivities around that, how she was going to be profiled, um, because it's not about profiling this um, her as being marginalized, pitiful, mm. but one who actually has been empowered. Yeah. Uh, and but but we need to recognize that there are family connections, there are community connections she has, and uh, she needs to be fully comfortable with that. So we had to work through. There were multiple different profiles that were spoken to, but finally when we um, identified this profile, so of course our storyteller as well as a producer on the ground had to speak to her to help her to understand and she had to be fully um, mm. consenting right? yeah. and understanding that she wants to tell this story because she, she has her life has been impacted, she wants people, other women like her yeah. to also know that it is no, not a dead end there is another way that um, they can live their life. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was one um, good example. Yeah. And we were very thankful after we told the story, um, it didn't just brought, bring about more sales for their incense uh, products, because when you buy more, it means that more women can be employed. Yeah. Right? It brought about over 560 inquiries from different parts of India yeah. and even in Nepal to say, can they set this up? in their respective vicinities. Yeah. And we didn't even call out for volunteers and it raised awareness. Um, and more than, I think, 1,800 people said, can I volunteer in some way? Right, fantastic. And I wonder, personally as well, what would happen to, what has happened to her? Uh, uh, I don't know if you followed so of up. Of course, of yeah. course we followed that. So Ranjana, who was in the story, mm. um, of course, I had to ask Ankit, what happened after we told the story, mm -hmm. right? Um, the very significant part for us was that um, after... It, she wasn't... Um, you know how sometimes the publicity can cause harm mm -hmm. than good? <laughs> uh, but in her case, um, she was welcomed much more by her community. Mm -hmm. uh, and. She, I think it was near Diwali um, that year, and she actually came to Ankit and said that um, she would like to use her own money that she's earned wow. to buy the box of incense that she personally has made mm. so that she can offer that to her gods. Oh my gosh, yeah. And also that itself speaks volumes it at does. a personal level. Yeah. So we. So for us, every story that we tell, it's it's not just well the, how the, it's impacted in terms of views, in terms of the overall impact, but it's also the people who have been featured in it. Yeah. And many a times, there's also like a ripple effect that yeah. happens <laughs> beyond the story launch. Yeah. Yeah. That is such a you know great news to hear. You know, I'm I'm glad she's doing well, and 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 also this ripple effect that you talk about was mm. you know was something that I hope for as well. Uh, and you mentioned about that process of how uh, even the organizations sort of say well, we feel comfortable working with you because you emphasize dignity in our subjects. Um, how do you ensure in the process of the storytelling? 
uh, maybe this has to do more about the story treatment, about how you film something, mm. what what kinds of uh, conditions and factors do your mm. filmmakers and producers take into account mm. to ensure that? Yeah, so very clearly, we are, it's the values that we're anchored in. Um, so when we look at storytellers and filmmakers to work with, as we make the first contact, we look at their portfolios, we speak to them, we really look out for integrity <laughs> and ethics. And we then, when we get into a project, there's always a producer from our content team that is assigned to work with the filmmaker on the story which means that how we tell a story, what's important, is guided with our in-house producer. And every step of the way um, in how we you know, interact with our story subjects um, and onboard our new storyteller, um, it is, it, it's, not, it's not something that we take lightly. So we invest the time. <laughs> we invest yeah. the time, we invest the the effort in helping uh, both new story subjects and new storytellers understand this is the ethos of how OPW works. And these values are fundamental and they cannot be compromised. Mm -hmm. And this would come through in how um, the sensitivities are being treated, uh, considered, um, that we don't misrepresent certain realities, we don't dramatize or sensationalize and we keep truthful to the facts. Mm -hmm. um, where there are sensitive issues, we, it, and that is always an aspect where we need to manage the treatment. Um, in a way, our guiding state is always, has, does this um, bring about, does it protect the dignity of how the story subject is being profiled, yeah. right? And when we work with more sensitive communities, let's say the refugee community, and, um, and many marginalized communities who feel that there's power imbalance, mm. right, then extra care needs to be taken to understand them, to really bring them to a place of trust and comfort, such that they don't feel that they need to say things in the interview just to please us. Mm. Yeah. So I would say it comes down to the right heart and values and there is a certain level of time investment that's required in the process. It cannot be done quick. Yes. Okay, so that's a key thing. It, it can't be done quick. Yes. Yes. Great. And also one of the unique features about uh, as an audience member watching the films is that you're really brought into the world and, and almost as if you're, you know, like a silent witness. Uh, mm -hmm next to the subject and what they're going through and the experiences. Mm. How do you ensure that in, the, in terms of the filmmaking process? I think the key is when the filmmaker has built up a real genuine relationship mm -hmm. with the story subject, then that comfort level becomes very natural. Yeah. That they don't feel, oh, they need to remember their lines yeah. or <laughs> it's scripted. So it's actually none of it is scripted. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really questions that are being asked based on pre-interview uh, um, section of, I mean, having gone through the pre-interview, I'm sorry, not pre-interview, pre-production interviews. Yeah. Um, and from there, the storytellers would ask the questions and they would have built a certain rapport yeah. by then. Yeah. I s uh, and this is perhaps one of the ways in which you ensure ethical storytelling, right? That you do not interfere with certain processes that your subjects are going through or experiences and their outcomes. Yes. You're really just witnessing, you know. Yes, yes. And, and I think for us, what we do um, stand by very strongly is the, the principles around um, highlighting the redemptive part, the mm. solution-based part, um, and making it relatable to audiences. Right. We will talk about the challenges, but we don't want to just focus on the challenges because we don't want the story to leave people heavy-hearted saying that it's such a huge problem, I can't do anything about it. Mm. So that's very important. <laughs> How 
how conscious are you? Because there's so much of this uh, material out there, content out there that is appealing to everybody for help. And in most cases, right, you know, they're, they're within the right to do so and they deserve it. What differentiates um, our Better World mm. films from some of those maybe, you know, one could possibly describe them as slightly manipulative, if you want to mm. call it? Mm. So I would say that it comes down to our brand of storytelling, yeah. of ethical storytelling, of value-based storytelling mm. that sets us apart. Um, and we don't want to get into clickbait, <laughs> into <laughs> manipulating headlines um, and bother, bothering around truths, right? Mm. Uh, and we have seen that because all the more, now there's so much more content out there that such a variety, um, people online are also a lot more savvy. Yeah. So it cuts both ways, which means that when they see how we have consistently been delivering on this and not, you know, wavered around how we would get eyeballs, um, then that is the type of following that we want to continue to build on. And it, yes, it's, it perhaps is not the majority <laughs> of the online audience, but it is a segment. Um, and that segment ties in with the values that we stand for. Mm -hmm. And we say that this is a segment of audience whom, as we build this rapport and build this trust with them too, they can be spreading our stories, yeah. you know, and be our advocates beyond ourselves. Yeah. Rebecca, so, um, your, your, some of your films are part uh, in the program at the True Colors Festival. Um, what is it, uh, what for you attracts you to select these films for the festival? Yeah, so we really resonate with what True Colors Festival stands for, mm -hmm. um, and on the theme of inclusivity, mm -hmm. um, our films actually demonstrate that through the stories, and so we have actually worked together with the organiser to identify five films and these five films um, are across different countries uh, but it brings out the very aspect of an inclusive society and that is what resonates um, and we hope that in partnering with True Colours mm -hmm. um, this would, these films will get out to a wider audience too um, and inspire more people to say yes all of us can play a part in building a more inclusive society. And why it's important? Because it is about us working with partners who share the same ethos as us. On our own, we can only do that much. Mm -hmm. And we are about our better world. <laughs> Partnerships that can extend um, the reach of these stories to reach more audiences. Because at the end of the day, it's for the causes. It's mm. about building um, that empathy and compassion amongst audiences who may be apathetic. Mm -hmm. Great. Tell us some of your um, some aspects of the films that you are, that are featured in this uh, festival that you particularly are fond of. Mm. Yes, one story is actually our Sofana. Sofana is brilliant, <laughs> <laughs> super talented. If you please watch. Um, this film on him, He's, he, he plays um, musical instruments, sings very well, um, and uh, he is not being held back by his handicap. Yeah. And it's amazing how his, he, he's, uh, he's got an amazing spirit uh, to life, and that's really inspirational. So after we told this story of Sofana, uh, it really raised a lot of awareness um, for him in Phnom Penh, where he lives. And he actually received invitations uh, to perform, wow. as well as an invitation to a TV show. Wow. So that's an, uh, that's an example mm -hmm. of, of impact. And the other story from the Philippines uh, features the Hard at Play Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and what they do is actually uh, bring together the using arts, right, inclusive arts, um, and empowering uh, differently able children um, to, to come alongside and to perform. Yeah. 
Right. So after we told this story, uh, they, it didn't just help them raise awareness and bring in more volunteers, but what it also did was they took um, the video that was done, it tied in with their fundraising campaign, and they raised over $20,000 for that. Amazing. So that was very encouraging for us because that's the impact that we want to see when we profile these stories and bring out the essence of the inclusivity, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm particularly fond of uh, the, the singing for harmony, which mm. uh, is such a potent message about you know, being inclusive across all the different uh, castes. Yes. In, in, in India, this was uh, specifically located in India. Yes, and uh, Nalanda Way Foundation does amazing work in mm. this and how they bring, they unite um, or they bring together children um, across different uh, segments of society through singing, actually it's through different arts forms. But in the, sh in the film, uh, we specifically highlighted through singing, to choir, Mm -hmm. and how through music um, that united them as one. Fantastic. In terms of some of, uh, we're going through, everybody in the world is going through a difficult time uh, with particularly with COVID to be more specific. Has this festival, for example, um, helped you, uh, you know, get closer to some of your goals? Mm -hmm. I think that it's important with COVID, everyone is now pivoted online, <laughs> which also means that there's a lot more uh, content online, mm. which actually may not be a bad thing, because which means that content is more accessible to people, mm -hmm. um, there is more focus in bringing that awareness, uh, but there's also in there an opportunity to differentiate. I think that with COVID, everything has been shaken up, which means that people are looking for meaning, people are looking for purpose, mm. people are looking at how do we be more inclusive in our societies, caring for others. So I think the timing of um, True, True Colors Festival, especially in a time of COVID, rings all the more important. And so we are very thankful to be able to partner at this point in time because it is important for these messages to go further, for these stories to resonate. Um, to audiences, especially at a time like this. Mm -hmm. um, our audiences here in the festival, if uh, hopefully you'll catch the films and if they feel uh, inspired to respond, to take action, where can they go and look for avenues to participate? Yeah, so clearly on our website, um, every story has got a call to action box. Mm -hmm. um, and then there, it will be very clear how your contribution can actually support the feature causes. Well, that's great. And thank you for having this conversation with us. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you.